Some string theorists have suggested that the Big Bang wasn't the beginning at all, that the universe could have existed long before, even forever. Not everyone is comfortable with the idea. I actually find it rather unattractive to think about a universe without a beginning. Uh, it seems to me that a universe without a beginning is also a universe without an explanation. So what is the explanation? What if string theory is right? and we're all living on a giant membrane inside a higher dimensional space. One of the ideas in string theory that was particularly striking to me and suggested perhaps a new direction for cosmology is the idea of brains and the idea of brains moving in extra dimensions. Some scientists have proposed that the answer to the Big Bang riddle lies in the movements of these giant brains. It's so simple. Here's a brain on which we live, and here's another brain floating in the higher dimension. There's absolutely nothing difficult about imagining that these collide with each other. According to this idea, sometime before the Big Bang, two brains carrying parallel universes began drifting toward each other until All of that energy has to go somewhere. Where does it go? It goes into the Big Bang. It creates the expansion that we see, and it heats up all the particles in the universe in this big fiery mass. As if this weren't weird enough, the proponents of this idea make another radical claim. The Big Bang was not a special event. They say that parallel universes could have collided not just once in the past, but again and again. It's an intriguing idea. Unfortunately, there are a few technical problems. Well, that was a very ingenious scenario that arose naturally within string theory. However, the good old problems creep back in again. The fact is, we don't really know what happens when two brains collide. You can wind up with the same situation we had with the Big Bang. The equations don't make sense. They have to make a lot of assumptions in their models, and I don't think they've really solved the problem of the Big Bang and string theory. If string theory is the one true theory of the universe, it will have to solve the riddle of the Big Bang. And there's a lot of hope that someday string theory will succeed. But for now, there's also a lot of uncertainty. As promising and exciting as the theory is, we don't entirely understand it. It's as if we've stumbled in the dark into a house, which we thought was a two-bedroom apartment, and now we're discovering is a 19-room mansion, at least. And maybe it's got a thousand rooms, and we're just beginning our journey. So how sure are we that the universe is the way that string theory describes it? Is the world really made up of strings and membranes, parallel universes and extra dimensions? Is this all science or science fiction? Well, the question we often ask ourselves as we work through our equations is, is this just fancy mathematics or is it describing the real world? These exercises in our imagination and mathematics are all at the end of the day subjected to a single question is it there in the laboratory can you find its evidence string theory and string theorists do have a real problem how do you actually test string theory if you can't test it in the way that we test normal theories it's not science it's philosophy and that's a real problem Strings are thought to be so tiny, much smaller than an atom, that there's probably no way to see them directly. Fermilab has a giant atom smasher. Here's how it works. Scientists zap hydrogen atoms with huge amounts of electricity. Later, they strip them of their electrons and send the protons zooming around a four-mile circular tunnel beneath the prairie. Just as they're approaching the speed of light, they're steered into collisions with particles whizzing in the opposite direction.
Most collisions are just glancing blows, but occasionally there's a direct hit. The result is a shower of unusual subatomic particles. The hope is that among these particles will be a tiny unit of gravity, the graviton. Gravitons, according to string theory, are closed loops, so they can float off into the extra dimensions. The grand prize would be a snapshot of a graviton at the moment of escape. And then the graviton goes to the extra dimension and then it shows in the detector by its absence. You see it by its absence. Unfortunately, Fermilab hasn't yet seen the vanishing graviton. And the pressure is on because another team is hot on the same trail. Four thousand miles away, on the border of France and Switzerland, a lab called CERN is constructing an enormous new atom smasher. When it's finished, it will be seven times more powerful than Fermilabs. At the top of the to-do list for both labs is the hunt for something called supersymmetry. That's a central prediction of string theory, and it says in a nutshell that for every subatomic particle we're familiar with, like electrons, photons, and gravitons, there should also be a much heavier partner called a sparticle, which so far no one has ever seen. Now, because string theory says sparticles should exist, finding them is a major priority. So it's a big discovery to find supersymmetry. That's, that's a, a humongous discovery, and, and uh, I think it's a bigger discovery to find supersymmetry than to find life on Mars. The problem is, if they exist, the sparticles of supersymmetry are probably incredibly heavy. So heavy that they may not be detected with today's atom smashers. The new facility at CERN will have the best chance once it's up and running in several years. If we do find sparticles, it won't prove string theory, but it will be really strong circumstantial evidence that we're on the right track. Over the next 10 to 20 years, the new generation of atom smashers is sure to uncover surprising truths about the nature of our universe. But will it be the universe predicted by string theory? What if we don't find sparticles or extra dimensions? What if we never find any evidence that supports this weird new universe filled with membranes and tiny vibrating strings? Could string theory, in the end, be wrong? Oh yes, it's certainly a logical possibility that we've all been wasting our time for the last 20 years and that the theory is completely wrong. There have been periods of many years where all of the smart people, all of the cool people, were working on one kind of theory, moving in one kind of direction, and even though they thought it was wonderful, it turned out to be a dead end. This could happen to string theory. A century ago, some scientists thought they had pretty much figured out the basic laws of the universe. But then Einstein came along and dramatically revised our views of space and time and gravity. And quantum mechanics unveiled the inner workings of atoms and molecules, revealing a world that's bizarre and uncertain. So, far from confirming that we had sorted it all out, the 20th century showed that every time we looked more closely at the universe, we discovered yet another unexpected layer of reality. As we embark on the 21st century, we're getting a glimpse of what may be the next layer. Vibrating strings, sparticles, parallel universes, and extra dimensions. It's a breathtaking vision. And in a few years, experiments may begin to tell us whether some of these ideas are right or wrong. But regardless of the outcome, we'll keep going because, well, that's what we do. We follow our curiosity. We explore the unknown. And a hundred or a thousand years from now, today's view of the cosmos may look woefully incomplete, perhaps even quaint. 
But undeniably, the ideas we call string theory are a testament to the power of human creativity. They've opened a whole new spectrum of possible answers to age-old questions. And with them, we've taken a dramatic leap in our quest to fully understand this elegant universe.